This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, uh, we're still on limited companies, uh, and in this lecture, I'm looking at revaluations. Now, I did mention this briefly when we have the lectures on depreciation, uh, but I said that it's really only limited companies normally that would revalue. Uh, and so I wanted to save it, the rules, until we came to limited companies. Uh, but if you remember, uh, re normally we show uh, non-current assets in the statement of financial position at the original cost, less accumulated depreciation. Uh, then we're not trying to show the true value, but occasionally it can perhaps become rather silly, particularly with buildings. You know, you may have bought a building um, 20 years ago for 10,000. You've been depreciating it. Perhaps it stands in the statement now at only 10,000. But buildings tend to increase in value. It may now be worth half a million. And if things start getting ridiculous, well, we are allowed to change it to its new value, to revalue. All right, there are rules, you know, we have to get proper value, we're saying we can't just make up a number. But we are allowed to. Uh, and it's a question of what the entries are when we revalue. So let me show you with example five. Purpose has a year end of 31st December each year. In his statement of financial position at 31st December 2002, he has buildings at a cost of 3.6 million and depreciation of 1.08 million. So what are we th showing it as valued at on our statement of financial position? On the statement of financial position, we'll have the cost 3.6 less the accumulated depreciation 1.08. So we're showing it at a net value of 2.520 million. That's the carrying value of a net book value. And the question says, on the 30th of June, we're going to revalue at 3.072. So we'll look at the exact figures in a second, obviously. But we think it's worth ooh, half a million more. We're going to revalue and show its new value. So let me show you how we do it. Let's look at the debit, debits and credits. But do appreciate. We are showing it at the moment at 2.5 million. We think it's worth more. We're going to increase its value. All right. Let's open up the T accounts. At the end of last year, the start of this year, uh, the cost, there was a balance of 3.6 million. And there was accumulated depreciation, a credit balance of 1080 million. Uh, we are going to revalue, however, that's the position at the 1st of January 2003. We're not actually going to revalue until the 30th of June 2003. And so before we do that, we'd better depreciate for the period up to June for the six months. So depreciation, it says it's 2% straight line. So it's 2% of cost. However, we're only depreciating for half a year, and so the depreciation for half a year 
uh, will be thirty six thousand. So let's depreciate as normal. Credit the accumulated depreciation with thirty six thousand. I assume you have watched the lecture run way back on depreciation because this bit's nothing new. But credit accumulated, debit a depreciation expense. Thirty six thousand. And so, where are we at the 30th of June? 30th of June, we've still got the original cost of 3.6 million, and the accumulated depreciation is now 5.5. Oh dear, I hope I've got my arithmetic right. One million one one six zero zero zero, and so although I won't subtract them, its carrying value, its net book value now, is three point six cost minus one point one accumulated depreciation. Uh, it's about two point five million. We want now to change its value to three point oh seven two million, and so what we do, I want to end up. We start all over again effectively with 3.072 as the value. And so the first thing we do, we get rid of that accumulated depreciation. Get rid of it. Debit the accumulated 1116000 and we credit a revaluation account. Uh, one 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 six two three and so uh, what does it now stand at? It now we now that it is a cost of three point six million. It's not worth three point six. It's worth three point oh seven two. So we now change the cost to its new value. How can I do that? Well, to go down from 3.6 million to 3.072 million, means we, oh dear, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. 3.6 million divided by 3.072. I need to credit with 528,000. If I credit it with five uh, twenty-eight thousand, it now brings the balance to I better double check that I've got my arithmetic right. Three oh seven two. Um, before I say any more, because some people get very upset now, but before I uh, say any more about that, the double entry, credit um, the cost to get the value I want, debit the revaluation account. Debit revaluation, what was it, 528,000. Uh, now, before I uh, sort of tidy up things, uh, some people now get uh, a bit puzzled, but they're not thinking properly. So listen carefully. They say, oh, we were supposed to be increasing the value. Not re we've reduced it. Well, no, we haven't. Because the value we had before was 3.6 less uh, 11116. We had a net value of about 2.5 million. What have we now got? 
If we were doing a statement now, we'd have 3.072 less zero. Its value in our statements is now higher. And what's the balance on the revaluation account? The balance on the revaluation Uh, one 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 six minus one two eight is five eighty eight thousand. And what is that? Surely that balance is the profit on revaluing. I've said twice, so I'll say one last time. At the date we revalued, we did have a carrying value of 3.6 3 million less 1.16 million. We had a value in our statement of about 2.5 million. We've now got a value in our statement of 3.072 minus 0. We've gone up from 2.5 million to 3 million. We've increased its value by 588,000. That is the profit on revaluation. Or the revaluation surplus. However, although it is a profit on revaluation, and any profit is owed to shareholders, it's not a realised profit. What I mean is, the only time we've guaranteed a profit, that we've really made a profit, is when we've actually sold it and had the cash. Here, it's only what you might call a book profit. I've not sold uh, the building, and you know, it may be next year the value goes down, or the value may have got more, or whatever. And we can't, therefore, show it in our statement of profit or loss. If we'd sold the building, we have the cash, and therefore you would show the profit on sale in the statement of profit or loss. But here, again, because we haven't sold it, we cannot show it in the statement of profit or loss. Having said that though, we're showing the business is worth more, this profit is owed to shareholders, but it cannot go in the statement of profit or loss, it must be shown separately as owing to shareholders. The amount owed to shareholders under capital or equity You'll have your share capital as always. Uh, you'll have a share premium if shares have been issued at a higher price. We've dealt with that. You'll have retained earnings. I've said enough about that already. However, in addition, we show separately any profit on revaluation. We call it a revaluation reserve. Here the profit on revaluation was how much? 588,000. Well, it is part of what's owed to shareholders. It increases the total owing to them. But it has to be shown separately because, again, it's not a real profit. We haven't sold. Uh, when we do eventually sell it, then that revaluation reserve can disappear and any further profit would appear in the um, statement of financial position. Uh, sorry, the statement of profit or loss. But a pure revaluation, we've not really made the profit, it has to be shown separately. And so it's another example of a reserve. All three of those are reserves. 
uh, and it is a capital reserve because again it cannot be paid as dividend. And now we've got them. Those are the three reserves you need to worry about. Retained earnings, share premium, revaluation. And remember, share premium and revaluation reserve are capital reserves. Can't be paid as dividend. Retained earnings are a revenue reserve. They can be paid as dividend. All right, just a couple of uh, small points. Oh, not a small, couple of small points at all, sorry. Just check you've got it. Just suppose I gave you this, that on the statement of financial position, we add equity, which remembers another word for capital. Suppose we have these figures, share capital, 20,000, share premium, 10,000, uh, retained earnings, ninety thousand, and revaluation reserve, uh, fifty thousand. All right, let me ask you two or three things. It should be very easy, but even though I can't hear you, obviously, still answer. What's the total owing to shareholders? And what is the maximum dividend? company could pay. You should be able to give me those two figures straight off, but think for a second. All right, the total line to shareholders is 170,000. All of those are owing to shareholders. That's the total capital, the total equity. What's the maximum dividend the company can pay? Well, remember, they can't repay share capital as dividend. Uh, share premium and revaluation reserve are capital reserves. They cannot be paid out as dividend. The most that can be paid as dividend is the revenue reserve, 90,000. As I said before, Companies won't usually pay it all out as dividend, but legally they are entitled to. But in law, the maximum they could pay as dividend is 90,000. All right. <coughs> well, we're not quite there. We'll have one more lecture where I can pick up uh, a few remaining points. <coughs>